So hi guys, welcome to Inspirational Journeys Through Life with Straight Talk with Nolan. I have a journey, you have a journey, but how many of us share our inspirational journeys to help others through life? Our journeys are authentic and we know you will resonate with it. I am your host, Nolan Pillay, and today I am humbled and honored to speak to Roshni Pakiri, who is the director of TOO, Yando Beer Distributors, <laughs> franchise of SAB, also an author of two books. Now, what impresses me about Roshni is her foundation called the Sanjit Train of Hope. We will get into this a little later. So Roshni, I am grateful for your time and presence today. And of course, ready to inspire our listeners. Welcome to Inspirational Journeys with Straight Talk with Nolan. Thank you very much, Nolan. I'm glad to be here as well. Great. And my apologies for the mispronunciation. No, no, it's fine. It's a difficult, it's pronounced Toyando, but it doesn't matter because it's not everybody um, gets that pronunciation. So you're excused. <laughs> cool. Thank you so much. So, Roshni, so, you know, as we get into it, uh, share with our listeners a little bit more about yourself. Tell us who Roshni is. Okay, um, I'm Roshni Pakari. I was born uh, in Durban uh, many, many years ago. <laughs> and uh, so I moved around a lot from Durban. And then we, um, with the family, we ended up in PE. And then later, after marriage, we, you know, also started moving again with jobs and stuff. And then we landed up in Louis Trichard um, in a small little town in uh, the Limpopo province. And um, I'm currently the, uh, the co-owner of um, Toyando Beer Distributors with my husband, of course. And uh, I'm an ex-police officer. I served 27 years in SAPS. And um, I'm also the uh, founder of the Train of Hope Foundation, um, which, as you said, we'll go into that a bit later. And I'm also the author of... Uh, two books, which was actually meant to be inspirational stories that got published into a book. And yeah, and now I'm just, uh, you know, trying to live the best life. Oh, that's awesome. So being in SAPS for 27 years and moving out of it, what made that change? What was the problem? Um, You know, okay, it was um, actually... It was a long time coming and I, you know, I just put it off. But although I loved my, my, uh, you know, my work at uh, South African Police Services and then it actually, it, um, you know, it was like in, in life, everything has its time to begin and a time to end. And uh, through a personal tragedy, all of that uh, kind of related to my final decision of leaving SAPS, which I did in 2017. And um, you know what, at first it was an adjustment and, uh, but it took some time. And now I, do, I look back at that wonderful experience and I'm glad I did it, but it was time to move on. And now I'm actually, um, I don't regret that decision uh, because I'm actually at a good place now. Uh, that's awesome. And that's a big change, you know, from working for somebody to working for yourself. I mean, that's what entrepreneurs yes. want, right? So that change yes. is, is a massive change. And, and I like the fact that it was a mindset shift and also, you know, a personal tragedy that prompted you uh, to move on as well. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, maybe just tell us about a traumatic experience in your life uh, that you would want to share with the, with the listeners. Okay, um, so in um, on the 25th of October of 2017, I lost my only child. He was 16 years of age and he succumbed to illness. And um, if I look at everything that happened in my life, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, we go through life with life changes and we think that we have small tragedies and whatever. And you think that, oh, you know, when you experience a small tragedy, you think that that's it, that's the end of everything. And until um, I realized, uh, uh, you know, that that the tragedy that I experienced was beyond my, uh, you know, beyond belief and beyond expectation, obviously. And, um, you know, I realized that that could be one of the most, um, the, 
the tragic experience of my life that I think that, um, you know, it put me in a different space in my life. And so, um, yeah, I would, I would have to say that that is the most unbearable thing that any person could go through. And, um, you know, it's, um, but still, um, I also want to say that being, be that as it may, um, I still, I still look forward to life. Okay. So, I mean, at 16 years old, right? Uh, you said your son was as well. That's, that's not long ago. That's like four years ago since he's passing. And I can feel it in your, in your energy that it's not an easy topic to talk about, but I'm grateful that you, you are, you know, wanting to share this uh, with the listeners as well. Uh, how did your son pass away, if I may ask? Uh, okay, he was like from July of 2017, he, he developed like a kidney problem. And then it was, you know, one thing led to another and the infection spread uh, through his body. And then, you know what, that was, um, and then he couldn't recover from it. So it was like a short term illness, but which he, you know, he obviously didn't recover from it. And we didn't think that we thought that he was going to recover. And we prayed that he did was going to recover but uh, you know it, it turned out beyond our control yeah I, I like what you said beyond our control right because there's certain yeah. things in life we we do have control over and there's certain things that you know happen and okay. we can only yes. grow, grow through it as, as well so I can just imagine so you know well done on, on growing through it uh, I know it's still a journey uh, it's not something easy but you know a lot of people go through some a loved one passing, especially now with COVID and everything that went on. There are so many people that have lost close family members, you know, uh, and it's tough dealing with this. What would be like your, your biggest takeaway or your biggest uh, learning from that? Okay, yeah, you know, um, like people say, you know what, uh, when you, when this happened to me, uh, it was like, firstly, the initial was, I felt everything that I was, um, you know, the shock and whatever comes with the initial reaction of something. And then um, I realized from it, it sounds actually strange, because from the onset of everything, uh, when people approached me and uh, started to ask about you know, like, or, or convey their condolences to me. And they said, you know, you must be prepared for the next few months. It's going to be like this and it's going to be like that. And um, all of what they were telling me scared me. And then I realized that um, I need, I, I don't want to be scared, I, uh, to be scared. I want to, you know, I just like looked for ways to get through this. It's like, I, I wanted it, I wanted to rush the process because I, because everyone was bombarding me with how I'm supposed to feel. But deep inside myself, I think it was like my, my spiritual journey that I had begun to say that, please, um, I, you know, I prayed to say, please, I do not want to go through this hell that people are saying that I'm going to go through. And then I, put, I shifted very, you know, it was like a turning point in my life that I said, yes, I'm going to go through all of this, but I'm also going to, I also want to get through this and I'm not going to, uh, you know, go under the covers, which is so easy to do. And um, for me, it was like, all I wanted to do was from the start, I just wanted to uh, feel better. You know, I just wanted whatever I was feeling to go away. And, um, you know, uh, and so I was working towards it. You know, it's like you, you, you got this mindset and you want to say, I'm, I need to get forward. I don't want to look back. This has happened. I know that it's a process and I know that everyone is expecting you to be a certain way, but I was just working towards uh, asking God, please um, help me through the next day. And every day, that's what I did. I got up saying, I'm sure today is going to be better than yesterday. And I started those um, days and I realized that it, it, does, it does help when you change your mind into believing that you can do something and then you can. Yeah, that, that's so true. Huh? And you, you know, what, what I see a lot is fear can put a person in a different space altogether. And, you know, the, the media, if you look at the media, what it's doing, like with COVID, for example, it's installing a lot of fear in people. And that fear leads to people being into a depressive state. From a depressive state, it leads to illness. And then before you long, you know, the person has, has passed on. So fear yes. is like one of the, the biggest killers out there. And I'm glad you overcame 
or you did not listen to that because you mentioned something about healing within. So I'm, I'm also into spirituality and, you know, maybe you can share a bit more about your healing, but I know healing is so powerful and people don't realize that within themselves, they have so much of potential to self heal. Right. Exactly. I always, I always use this example. Imagine if you in the kitchen or somewhere and you cut your finger, right. You don't rush to a doctor to go and put stitches on it your body automatically finds a way of actually healing that over time as well. So if you can heal from a small cut, okay, broken bone is a different story. You've got to go to the hospital, have a, a cast on, et cetera. But there's certain things that we can heal from, right? So I, I'm very interested to understand a bit more about your healing or your technique, because this, I tell you what, in the 21st century, this can help a lot of people to understand that they can heal from within. They just need that time, right? Yes. And um, yeah, in, in terms of spiritual healing, I think like you, um, because it, it has also to do with faith, uh, you know, it has to do with faith that you, be, you have to believe in something. So I think even prior to my son's passing, uh, I have to admit that I was a very, uh, I was even then a very spiritual person. And, um, you know, I knew that, uh, you know, and I just growing up, I always knew that I was not one to, for some other reason, I was not one to be down for too long. You know, I was, uh, you know, while everybody is, um, you know, everybody's doing something, you know, they moody or they being this way. I was also, a, I was just a different way. And I annoyed people with my, uh, you know, always laughing and smiling. And, um, but then I realized today that there was a reason I was made like that, because uh, it sounds crazy, but it's like, I feel like God has said, Roshni, I'm making you this way because I need to prepare you for what's to come in your life. So I look back at all the things that happened in my life and I realized that I was busy getting prepared. And um, so when it happened, of course, it's the devastation, like, like the book says, it's, it's total devastation, but I was still Roshni and I still, I couldn't change my personality. So I started to want to feel, all I was interested in was wanting to feel the joy. And then I opened that door within myself. Like I would say, God, please today, um, you know, everyone says that you need to ask for strength. So I get up in the morning and I say, you know, I don't feel good today. So I need you to help me. And you know what, strangely, the next hour or so, I'm, uh, you know, moving on with my day. I'm, I'm, I'm dressing up and, and I'm going to work and I'm doing something or I'm, you know, and, and you know what I realized? I, I, I smiled to myself and I realized, so God, you did hear me because my day has changed. Yeah. And so I was doing that every day. And uh, some days, Okay, some days I didn't have the strength to actually say that, but I knew that I was ex even expecting that I can have two bad days and seven good days. And, um, you know, I was just juggling it like that. And then, and I found my, um, you know, it's like learning to, to ride a bike or learning to do something. You first will fall and get up and then you'll fall again. So, and then after that, you're not going to fall. You know, you're going to continue, you know, because you've been trained. So that's how I felt. I felt like I was in training my whole life for this huge thing that was going to happen. So it was, it was a big blow, but my spirituality let me, um, let me look at it as another blow. And it might sound cold, but that is, like we said, that is, this is the straight talk. Yeah. It's, I started to feel um, that I can do this. Yeah. And here I am. Um, the journey is, is very difficult. It never gets, it gets uh, a bit easier, but it's still there. It's like you carry the pain with you. You incorporate that in your life uh, and you live. Yeah, very valid points. And, you know, to, to the listeners, I, I want you guys to get something, right? What Roshni is actually saying is no matter what obstacles we go through in life, look, we're human. There's always going to be obstacles. The difference is how you handle these, op uh, these obstacles. That's the key part. And reaching out to your higher purpose or looking for your spirit guides, you can do that. We all have that ability to do that. You just have, gotta have a strong belief system and a strong mindset and be able to do that. And I like when you said you were con you're consciously aware of what's actually what's going on. 
a lot of people, when they go through obstacles in life, they just lose it and they go into a depressive state because they're afraid to handle what has happened in their life at that point. So I want the listeners to, to realize this and understand this. Life is not happening to you. Life is happening for you. So always remember that life is not happening to you. Life is happening for you. A lot of the things, like in Roshni's case, she had no control over her son passing on. If she, if she could have control over it, of course, I'm sure she would have had control. And she would have, she had did her best as well. So always reach out and remember that obstacles are going to be there. We are human. So, you know, in saying that Roshni as well, I, I can imagine and I know it's very tough uh, waking up in the morning, right? What's your why for waking up in the morning every day? What's getting you up and going? Uh, I mean, you've got to wake up and see another day, right? What yes. excites you to wake up the next day? Okay, you know, even, um, well, after my son's passing and I, um, you know, as time was going on, I realized that there has to be a purpose, uh, you know, for, for life. So I, I realized that his journey had was limited to that 16 years and my journey obviously I'm here today so my journey is is uh, you know was given a little bit uh, the duration is a bit longer than his so what do I do do I must I sit down and not live because yes I, I used to always say that he's my life and so in a way I I lost my life a part of my life when I lost him so what I what I realized that I'm still here. So let me make the best of my existence until, um, you know, my, until we, like I said, we have a duration of life. So I will, I wanted to say that my, there has to be some purpose for this ordeal that I had to go through. So every day when I got up, I, I looked forward to, um, you know, making a difference now in this world and, you know, making my son proud and, and also living um, you know, continuing being his mother and continuing, do, um, you know, letting his life mean something. So I knew that, you know, I got my own instinct that I needed to, I, ne I needed to proceed and I needed to wake up and, um, you know, live the rest of my life um, and do things in his name. And, and because that is what he would have wanted. Personally, I feel that is what he would have wanted because it's, uh, my time was not up. It was his time that was up, but I'm still here. And what do we do with this? Um, what do we do with the, the rest of our life? We have to live it. And whilst we're living it and existing, we need to live, meaning doing things, you know, finding your purpose. So I spent my days finding um, this purpose. And thus I, you know, uh, took the uh, initiative to actually create a foundation in his name. Uh, it's not that just because he passed, I did this because he, he was a very, very generous person at that age. You know, he would, uh, you know, overly generous with everything. And then I realized, and then when, when he passed, I realized that his generosity is not going to go unheard. So hence I created this um, Sanja train of hope because we provide hope for the hopeless, we say. So we, we um, it's funded by our business. And we do projects where the underprivileged children, we try to help them to, you know, um, make their lives a bit better where we could. And we did a lot of projects, keeping girls in school and, uh, you know, with the menstrual cups and all of that. So that, that's just an example of what we started to do. And each time we did that, it was, it, it, the feeling was just beyond explanation. You know, it was, it was like we found our purpose. And um, we wanted to create that joy again. And, and you know, slowly it was coming back. And uh, we believed that um, that was, I believe that was my calling because I needed to pursue this, um, pursue this projects in his name. And, you know, it, it brought about a healing that um, I don't know if many would understand. And, but it was, it, it's remarkable um, how it, it works that we, when you give, you heal um, and you have to give with the intent to feel the real and true healing within yourself. Wow, I love that. So giving without expectation. Uh, you know, a lot of people have this notion that uh, when you give something to somebody, they want something back in return. 
And it's totally not the right way to think about life. Life is about giving without any expectation. So another a golden nugget that you, you mentioned is make the best of your existence. Okay, so the key message I'm getting from what you just said, Roshni, is give without expectation. And the reason yes. why I want to mention this is because a lot of people, they give, but they expect something in return. And the moment they start setting themselves up for this, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. You got to give something from your heart. Give yes. from your heart and don't expect anything back. So that's a valid point for our listeners to, to learn going forward. Uh, you know, just learn to give without expectation and watch how your, your life unravels. The other thing I picked up on is make the best of your existence. That was so beautifully said. You know, a lot of people, no matter what they go through, they don't make the best of their lives. A lot of people just give up and they just lose hope completely and they start to stagnate. And they just, let's be honest, they just wait to pass on because they feel they can't live their life uh, anymore as well. So- yes. You spoke about uh, leaving a legacy or living the legacy of your son. That's something that we all should be actually leaving some legacy before we pass on as well. So I think, tell us a bit more about the Sanjit Train of Hope Foundation and okay. how can people get involved with it as well? Okay, um, I just want to say, so the, so the Sanjit Train of Hope Foundation is like, it's, um, you know, nonprofit and it's funded uh, purely by our business. Uh, the reason we don't take, like, you see, we don't, um, you, you know, uh, uh, accept donations or whatever, because we wanted to do it as parents, you know, like we wanted to, because he, he, uh, he was a person like this, you know, he would um, just want his mom and dad to do everything it's like if um if his friend had was in if his friend's parents was in a financial crisis and he would come home and say you know mom and dad uh, was suspended because they didn't have money to pay the bill for example and he would say uh you know what then i say oh shame you know um and then i left it at there then he would come back and say mama you're not you mean you you and dad are not going to give me the money to give to my friend and i said oh i didn't know it was an option you know so sh we can but we we didn't know if the parents will accept it so he was the point what i'm trying to make is that he was this person it's like you must just give where you can give uh, everything and um you know uh, it's just you and dad must gi give it on your own we it's not we don't ask anybody else it's like you and dad must give it so we that's how we want to the foundation to be so we just every uh, whatever uh, funds was in the business we take it and we buy from that uh, you know like equipment for the um, the creches, the one creche was actually about to close their doors because they didn't have mattresses for the kids to sleep on. And the kids ranged from six year, uh, six months old to five years. And so they want, they had to close their doors. Um, so we stepped in and got them like, you know, um, uh, mattresses and fridges and stoves so they could keep the um, creche open. The kids could sleep on the mattress. Before that, they were sleeping on cemented floors just with a mat. And um, so they needed also, uh, you know, a fridge and a stove to, to be able to cook food and store food. And, and so, so when we did that and they were, you know, the, the gratefulness that we saw, the gratitude in their eyes and, and the kids were all so excited about what, what we just did for them. And that was our first project. And you know what, to date, it's been three years now and uh, to date, the school is running smoothly and they got access to stuff and um you know that was one of the examples of what we were doing so we 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 call it the Sanja train of hope because it's like moving from um uh one area to another uh, or one community or another you know seeing where there's the most need uh and we stepped in and funded these uh, projects so that is why uh, we we um, don't actually it's not um, if people wanted to give something we would tell them listen you come to that specific project and you can drop off your stuff but the principle of it was we wanted to do it purely just like 
our foundation. That's why we, it's like we were the, are the parents and that's my son and we wanted to make it just our foundation. So, uh, so that we, we wanted him to know that we're doing it just by ourselves for him, like how he would have wanted. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, that's so. So that basically is your contribution towards humanity. So, so you know, well yes. done on that because uh, contribution is so important. A lot of people go through life, and once they make it big, for example, they forget about contributing towards the welfare of humanity. So, thanks for keeping humanity alive. Uh, it's such a, a critical thing that's missing in the world currently. Uh, we need to help to restore humanity as well. So, Absolutely. Okay, so the other thing that I would like to ask you about is, you know, what about people who've been through similar experiences like yourself? How do you keep them positive? Because let's be honest, right? A lot of people being human, we got feelings, we got emotions, we got to go through depression and stuff. How do you help them by teaching them how to be positive? Based on your okay, uh, yes. Um, um, you know, um, after my son and then I, started um just one day you know when we were busy with uh we, we did the projects and, and then after that we uh we when it was locked down uh the first like the first time we were you know when we didn't know what was happening and it was when we on lockdown i just one day took my phone and i did a, a video for example and i said uh you know people are going through such hectic times and um we you know we feel like we want to crawl into a hole and and you know just live there without uh, making it making you know without getting up and doing things and um so i i said to people that you know what this is where i am at now it's like we we stress about so many things about our life and look here we are now and it's we're on lockdown and we got no control over this and uh, we want to because it's human nature to feel, to get up one day and you feel bouts of depression and uh, then you're happy and then you're sad and then it's like so many emotions we go through and we um and we we the, then we we you know, we try to blame somebody about the way we feel Like we say, you know what, some people want to say, you know what, I, I don't want to uh, be, I don't believe in, in the almighty. I don't believe in anything because look at where we are now and you get depressed and whatever about the situation. Whereas that is the time you need it. Um, you need God the most is like when you are in such and it's it's not a time to abandon your faith it's a time where faith should be at its highest point and so I sh showed people that is I said this is what I've went through and yes I'm also feeling like what you're feeling but I've also learned that um, we must move forward whether we like it or not and it, because uh, the easy it's like uh, it's easier to go under the covers so people choose that route uh they rather choose the easy way out is like oh you know what i'm depressed i've lost this I've, i'm here i'm doing this and i can't move forward i don't they don't want to hear anything positive so i said that it is your choice at the end of the day to leave your house uh no matter what you feel you it's your choice to leave the house and you have to take that step in order for God to help you. It's like you have to go apply for a job to get a job. You can't sit down and say, oh, I'm unemployed now. And, uh, you know, no one's going to help me. And you under the covers and without taking the step. And that principle should apply to everything in your life. Uh, you have to take that step out. And I think when you open, it's like I feel God as a door that we need to knock on. Uh, which they they waiting for us to knock they they can't come to us we have to go to them first um you know asking because they they you know so that's what i how i motivated people by saying that we need to take a step and see what is out there um because we will never be able to do it when we're sitting at home or you know sleeping under the covers and choosing to be down because uh, when you take that step out you 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 give yourself an opportunity to get help. So you have to get out there and live your life because sitting indoors is, it's not, um, you know, it's like 
you're putting a wall which no one can get in. And um, we tend to build walls around ourselves when we're in trouble and when we, you know, experience any trauma. And I think that um, everyone wants to say, you know what, yes, we grieve differently. And, and I agree totally that everybody's got their own thing. But up to which point? Yeah. For how many years do you do that? Yeah. And when does it end? Um, because we can't sometimes, I'm sorry to say this, but sometimes we can't always use this trauma as an excuse in our life because we'll pass it by. 20 years will go by and say, and I'm going to say, oh, you remember that time? Uh, you know why I'm like this? Because I lost my child. You know why I'm doing this? Because uh, I'm divorced. Oh, I'm this or this experience and that experience. And we will, you, we have, a, of course, we have a valid reason. But it should not, it's not a valid excuse uh, to not want to continue your life because your number, um, you, you be in a queue, I say, we in a queue to, uh, to die. So, so whilst we're waiting in that queue, what do we do? Do we sit down and just wait, like you said, wait to die? Whereas we, we can, um, we all deserve to have joy and happiness in our life, every one of us. That's why we're here to live the best life that we can live. And, and uh, God has never promised that you will never have pain. Uh, I think he only promised healing, but the pain part is giving a bit of that to everyone. Everyone in this world experiences some kind of pain. And, um, you know, it's not, it's not, he's not being unfair to me and fair to this one. We all got that uh, some kind of trauma in our life that, um, uh, you know, it's going to happen. It's inevitable. Mm -hmm. So, but the promise is the, the healing. Exactly. No, very well said. And, you know, uh, it's, people should not stay in the victim or self-pity mindset uh, because the more they stay in that, the more you're going to get caught up uh, in the situation. And on a lighter note, life is not a straight line. If life was perfect in a straight line, how boring would that be? So life is meant to throw us obstacles, right? So, Obstacles yes. got to be there because that's what makes us a bit more resilient and more stronger and allows us to grow as people, both in our personal life, our business life, our relationships, whatever it may be. So we got to go through these uh, obstacles. So key takeaway there is get out and live your life. So it's quite important. Remember, when we lose loved ones, uh, like we said, it's beyond our control, but we got to do something to reach some kind of peace and closure within ourselves in order to move forward. Because we don't want to look down 20 years in the future and realize, wow, I'm in the same spot because I chose to live in this victim or self-pity mindset for something that was beyond my control. So that's an amazing share, Roshni. Thank you so much about this as well. I can see this experience taught you a lot of things, right, in, in life, so many experiences. Yes. What's the one thing that you think will be beneficial to people who have lost hope? Um, you know, uh, it's easy, like I said, you know, it's very easy to lose hope and, uh, because, you know, everything look, looks bleak around you when, when you are, uh, ex when you experience any trauma and, um, my, 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 I continue to say that we can control our mind because, uh, I noticed that, you know, uh, people, when there's a day, say, say when it's a Christmas day or when it's your loved one's birthday or the anniversary of their death, uh, it, you kind of program yourself, you know, tomorrow is going to be such a bad day for me because this is the day, um, you know, um, it was my dad's, my late dad's birthday or my late mom's birthday or my late son's birthday or whatever, and you program your mind. So how come we program our mind those type of things that we choose and so we get up on that day and we get into the mode of the day that you know what today I'm going to be sad so how come we as human beings since we got so much power over that specific day surely we can have this much power over the other days of our lives so how can, why can't we live that Christmas day or that uh, you know anniversary in a different light and see it as um um, you know, something different because we, we don't realize how powerful we are to control our mind. So if we control our mind, how come we remember that specific day? It means we program to say, you know, tomorrow is my, my, my late son's birthday. I have to be 
sad because this is what's expected of me. But why can't you, uh, why can't we make the day a little bit more different? We didn't say that, you know what, you must hold a big, um, you know, festival about it, but you can maybe change to say that any day uh, can be a great day for me. It doesn't have to be one specific, specific day that I put aside to feel bad or to feel sad or to be angry or frustrated because that days can come any time of the year. So it means that you have, if you got such control over that day, then you've proven to yourself that you have control over any day. And uh, that means that you can control how you feel, how you take something, how you, you know, like they say, 90% of what somebody, or 10% of what somebody says uh, can be bad, but how you react to it is the, is the 90%. You know, so uh, if you have a good reaction to anything, uh, it can be beneficial to you. Yeah. So that's how you got to see it. It's it's all about your 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 thoughts and the actions you take uh, towards it as well, right? And we do yes. have control of our minds. And I'll give you an example that's so very very common. Have you ever heard of people that are complaining and saying, "I'm feeling so sick. I'm feeling so down. I'm feeling depressed." Yes. Right? What happens to that yeah. person? They stay depressed because they program exactly. their minds to be sick all the time, to be depressed, to be sad, to be lonely, et cetera. They are causing their own despair by programming their minds versus if they just change the, the mindset around, they can change it to one of a, a very positive one. So the control lies within us, no one else. Exactly. We, all, we all are climbing our own mountains and it really is up to us on what we do and how we get to our destinations as well. So great yes. piece of advice for the listeners. Thank you very much for that. I see a lot of these steps that you, you have taken as part of your healing and your, your grieving process. And I guess for me, also talking about it helps you in the process as well, right? Yes, you have reached some peace, you have reached some closure, but the more you share your, your, the, your inspirational journey with others, you're helping them as well and you're healing in the, in the same process. So with the healing process, we, we spoke about from healing within, changing your mindset, uh, not allowing yourself to be depressed, et cetera, right? How long do you think, I know this is not a very easy question, but how long should you think one should stay in a mindset of sadness before they move on? Okay, I think, you know what, a person can't really, I think, um, you know what I learned with human beings, because I dealt with also people who had lost uh, kids, uh, you know, who turned to me with my book uh, that, that I wrote, it was my journey from tears to hope. And um, I, I shared my journey with a lot of people and I realized people were, were telling me, you know, like, I can't be as strong as you and uh, I'm not you. I don't have the personality like you and I can't do this and I can't do that. And I said, but at the end of the day, I'm also doing this for the first time. I also don't have an experience. Uh, I only I had the one child that that was the first loss that a personal loss like this that I've experienced in my life but I chose how I'm going to move forward from it and I think when it when it comes to the duration of grief and people say oh you know what it's um, uh, it differs from person to person but I also believe that again the control is there yes there's grief but grief still you know what a person can grieve for 20 years but we can still live because grief uh, you know, it um, manifests into so many things. Sometimes grief can make you go out there. It's like my, my husband and I, we were, uh, you know, uh, two or three months after his death, we took his, um, you know, his ashes to Dubai because it was one of his favorite places. And we, we, we threw some there because we had promised to take him for his 17th birthday there and he didn't make it. So we took his ashes and scattered uh, in Dubai. And uh, it was so controversial to people. But you know what we said? Yes, we are grieving, but I can't go out there and walk on the street and um, be crying all the time because there is a time, there is a space, there's a place and a time for grief, meaning, uh, you know, the physical aspects of grief. But grief is always there. It's how you're going to uh, even though we grieve, we have to get up in the morning and have a shower and have breakfast and, uh, you know, go to work and all of that stuff. So you, you, um, 
you can grieve for 30 years doing that life. So it's 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 uh, the, the concept of grief is is different pe- for different people. Mm-hmm. So um, and it's okay to grieve for 10 years, for 20 years, but in the midst of that grief, you can still go out and live your life. And uh, it's like you know when you break a limb uh, and you. Um, Sometimes you can't get, you know, it's like if they amputate your leg or your arm, uh, you find ways to live with it. So grief is like a thing They, you know, when you lose a loved one, it's also like something has been amputated from your life. But what do you do now? You live with that amputation, you incorporate it in your life, but it's there. It's like a person who loses their leg is always going to look at the leg and take him back to the day that he lost his leg. So yes my grief every day you will think about it you will think about you know what i lost my son i lost my part of my life i don't go a day without forget uh, without thinking about it. but i i don't go a day without living so i'm living with it and i didn't shove it out of my life i incorporated it in my life so i don't know when does it end but it you do smile and you do find joy and you you just got to say you know what god you are, this is the experience i've had and i'm incorporating in my life but please help me to live my the rest of my life to my the best of my ability well well said so you know there is no manual for for death or for anyone personally so you got to take it one step at a time. And you're right, there is no time period, but I like the part where you can't stall your life either. You've got to continue with your life and you got to live for the rest of your life. you got to live. That's what our, our purpose is here for as well. And also many people may think that by a person losing a loved one and carrying on, on, carrying on with their life after two weeks or a month, that person is being selfish. They're not being selfish. Self-love is so missing in this century of ours, people need to realize that you matter to you. So you still have a balance of your family to look after as well. So how are you going to go on if you're going to be in this victim mindset all the time? So you need to focus on rebuilding yourself because it's your own mountain that you're climbing and start moving forward stronger than ever as well. So thank you for sharing that, Roshni. Uh, I'm very interested. The title has intrigued me, Tears of Hope. Can you tell us a little about, that's your first book as well, right? Uh, yes, yes. Um, so I wrote, um, you know, it was um, during lockdown again, you know, I was trying to keep myself busy because we were in, we are in the uh, alcohol industry. So some time to time we were on lockdown, as everyone knows. So when we were at home and then I just, took, you know, put my thoughts to, uh, to paper and then um, uh, I got set up with somebody who was, I, I said, you know what, I want to publish the story in a magazine. Uh, you know, it's like um, uh, m- a life altered. Uh, the title of the book is A Life Altered, My Journey from Tears to Hope. And um, so I, I started just writing what happened to me on that specific day. And I didn't go into much detail about my son's illness and all, because it, that wasn't uh, the issue or that wasn't what I wanted to inspire people with. Uh, I wanted to inspire people with how did I uh, carry on and how did I move on and um, so then a person approached me or I approached the person and they said you know what uh, we will publish uh, your story in, in 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 a book form and I was like so excited and um, so I put my book out there on social media and you know uh, I said it was for charitable purposes whatever proceeds I made from the book and you know what it went everywhere in South Africa and it ended up even at a church in Port Elizabeth uh, where they're using it for uh, drug rehabilitation because there was so much hope in that story. It's a short story, but there was so much hope in that story that, um, you know, even drug rehabilitation people are actually, uh, um, you know, using it to help them. And uh, it turned out very amazing because in that book, I was very, very... uh, I spoke about my grief and I was very, uh, you know, like um, I used everything, every, the the good, the bad and the ugly of everything. And I said that how we managed to, to get out and how we 
couldn't stay in our house and we had to run away. We, part of us going everywhere was running away from the house. And each time we ran away and came back, it was a little bit better because we needed to get out and not see familiar surroundings. And in that book, I show that this is what happened on that day. That, and this is how I, ma I made a turning point in my life. And um, I choose to go forward and I choose to, and every time when I went, I mean, I just stepped back into work, I just joined my husband quickly after my resignation and I went back in, into work. But the whole day I was busy thinking about how should I, how can I find a way to feel better? I don't want to feel this way. So I was, you know, finding ways and we were planning, you know, to run away each time, go on go here, leave the country a bit and come back. And meanwhile, all of this was, uh, yes, controversial. And we got a hard time from people who said, but how can you do this? And I thought, like, like you said, it was our own because no one was there at night when we, um, you know, were grieving. And so we had no help in that way because no one can help you. It's only you, uh, you know, must work through your own, um, you know, sadness. And um, so in my book, I showed that nobody could help me and I needed to help myself because no book, there's no one, not therapy or anything can help you work through your he inner emotions because uh, the book can give you guidelines, but at the end of the day, you still got to do it. Uh, you know, it's like if they teach you how to sew. Uh, you'll have the machine and you'll have everything and you'll have the manual in front of you, but you still got to know how to read this manual yeah. and, you know, how to incorporate it in your life and how to work with it. So at the end of the day, it's just you by yourself, you, your, your, your creator. And, um, you know, uh, it, at the end of the day, it's even as, as the fact that I'm married, my husband and I even grieve differently, but because it's, because it's, no two people can be in the same position. So you, it's you alone at the end of the day to work through, through this kind of advice that you get and all of that. So my book actually teaches people that don't lose faith because um, you might think that God was unfair in a situation that you are in, but death has been around for, a, for billions of years. The very first people on this earth uh, you know, they lost their child, you know, Adam and Eve had their son, Abel, they lost their child. So people want to say, this is not the, uh, the uh, right order of life, but whose society is saying it's not the, the correct order of life? Because the correct order of life happened when Adam and Eve lost their child, meaning that there's no unfairness. It's the ways of the world. It's this is the world that we live in. We're gonna lose. There was no no one ever said you're not gonna lose any loved ones. And I learned that what people are preaching about uh, the natural order of life, there is no such a thing like that. Yeah. There's no natural order of life. Um, it's just life. Uh, it's defined by life, not a natural order or God is unfair to this person, because I asked that, uh, they said, don't you think God is unfair? And I said, no, because if it was, he took Roshni and he said, Roshni, you know what? Uh, you're going to lose your child and I'm the only one in the world. Then I might think, oh, you know what? This is unfair. But when I looked around and I learned that there's millions who are in a position like me and some worse mm -hmm. that I realized that, the more faith I have, because I said, God, I know you're not unfair to me and I'm just still going to live my life that you gave me. I didn't come with my son. I didn't come with my husband. I came alone. My son came alone and we all be born alone and we have our own responsibility to carry on life mm -hmm. and live the best life, whether it's with your husband, without your husband, with your child, without your child. Um, you know, uh, because we, unfortunately, it's a painful journey that we live, but we can also still make it uh, a good yeah. journey. No, well said, very well said. That's such sound advice as well. And, you know, we, we, we go back to the community and society, what they mm -hmm. think about us and, you know, the way they react. And of course, community and society in today's world is to so totally different in the sense that uh, many of the let's call it re religious leaders and even mm -hmm. political leaders, they kind of spread the wrong message to people. 
And what people are failing to do is people are failing to apply common sense to understand for themselves. And this is where people yes. go wrong because they just want to jump and follow this and think this is there's only one way. But the moment you start applying your mind and using common sense, then you'll realize, wow, life is different. There's so many things that I can't go. I don't have to grieve forever, you know, because society yeah. expects you to grieve forever, but you don't have to. So that's the difference. And, and this is what people need to do. There's so many tools and techniques out there as well on, on the networks, on wherever they look, there's so much of advice. There's people like yourself to speak to, like myself. We, we, we coaches, we can help people. People need to reach out and ask for help. Gone are the days where we kind of suffer in silence and we don't reach out. Just by talking about an experience makes a big difference to a person's life. So very great advice there. Thank you so much for that. Now, what does survival mean to Roshni? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, it's like survival, you know, it, it goes back to, uh, you know, I, I've touched on all of that and I just, um, the, the tools that, like you talked about now, there's tools and uh, my spiritual journeys or, or my spiritual um, journey now has grown so much that I, I focus on that. I focus on uh, to, I, what I need to say, what I need to put out there to the universe. It's like, I need to say, you know what, I'm going to be this person. I'm going to heal. And um, and I say, I just say every day, God help me, please God help me to heal because there's only a part I can do and I need you to help me with it. And my survival has been like, it's been great because I've um, I've opened that door. And it's very simple. Uh, when you open that door and you ask, I, I, I've, I've already said this, but when you open the, any door to anything and you ask and you reach out, that's your stepping stone to, to greatness because uh, it's amazing how you can feel when you say, uh, you know what, God, I need you today to make my day or make me get through this day. And then you get through the day and sometimes... Uh, like doors have opened for me, uh, you know, with like writing my book. I've never been, look, I was a policewoman for 27 years. Let me tell you something. I didn't even want to go near a computer over the years because I was like a, on the street all the time and, you know, being busy. I was like kind of a street child and I never wanted to sit down and, you know, do anything on the computer. And but changes happened and uh you know i made such changes and people say i didn't know you could write or i didn't know i said i couldn't i didn't know myself i just opened doors to new things and i asked for guidance and i um you know and then an amazing thing happened uh, things happened because i got to speak at events and and people were inspired by my story and some people even said to me listen roshni uh, I also lost, but now I realize I'm going to live. And it's the first time I'm talking about my the death of my loved one. I lost two kids and all of that. And when I got home, I realized that there's something else that I'm meant to do. And so now I'm surviving um, with that. I'm surviving with the, the wonderful thought that I'm meant to do so much more. So I'm excited for the rest of my life because I know I got so much to give and I just don't, I, I want to try to give as much as I can uh, of myself and, um, and I'm busy doing it and it's wonderful. Wow. And I feel yeah. wonderful about it. No, true. And, and I think that's, that's so priceless, adding value to other people's lives. And it, could, it doesn't have to be somebody you know, it can be a total stranger as well. So the fact that somebody takes something from your story, and that's what the listeners are taking today, is so valuable that they can realize or resonate with your story as well. And that's exactly what the show is all about. It's all about capturing inspirational journeys so that people can resonate with it and realize they're not alone in this. They're not alone. Of yes. course, we all are, are born with some survival uh, instincts within us, but do we ever use it? Or do we only use it you know, when the time is right? So we do have these abilities. And I think the one thing I want the listeners to be very uh, alert about is when we talk about spirituality, please do not confuse it with religion. It's two separate. Ex religion is yes. the one part. Spirituality is totally different. So don't think that they mix together, right? Because I'm a, also a very religious person, yet I'm also very spiritual as well. So uh, have a research or we'll, we'll do a talk at some point about what the difference is and what it means as well. 
So we're almost coming to, to the end now. And, and what I'm looking for uh, as well, Roshni, is what's the message of hope for others who have shared similar experiences? I know you shared a lot of things already, but what's yes. the one last thing you can, you can share with the listeners? Okay, um, the, the, the hope that I um, uh, want to share in terms of loss, for example, is the, you know, people obviously, they, they think that this, uh, because, because uh, death has such a dent in your life, uh, when you lose somebody, it makes such a dent, and then you, you, it's like your human instinct is to give up. And, uh, but when you like like when we went now into a bit of spirituality we it's like you have to learn that there's still so much i need to do and your life still must have purpose and your loved ones that they don't want you to um they don't want you to, or they them to be the cause of your existence just being like hopeless and you're not living life and um people when they lose somebody they feel that they don't deserve to laugh again or to smile again or to have any joy they it's like if they if they smile then they think oh you know what i shouldn't smile because i i lost somebody and i should be a specific way but i think that they must know that we are all of us every each and every one of us are still deserving of every kind of joy and it's there's nothing wrong with wanting joy and happiness in your life there's not there's absolutely nothing wrong with it because um, we deserve it and all of us deserve it. And uh, unfortunately, um, we can't have it. If we can't have all, we can't have the loved ones there and we must find a new normal, a new life. And um, we can still um, find joy and happiness because we deserve it. And we need to still, uh, you know, live the life that whatever for the rest of whatever we have left, uh, we need to make it work for us so that we can still actually have our a, another legacy, build another legacy for us without that that loved one. And um, also many people think that they don't deserve it, but they do deserve to live. Because if we, if we didn't deserve to live, then why are we still here? What are we still here to do? Are we still here to hang around or whatever? But because we've got a purpose yeah. and uh, find your purpose because you've got it. And it's like, everybody can do everything. Uh, I feel like everybody can do everything. If you say that I want to do it, you just got to want to do it. And, um, and beca because I, I don't think that if you know your loved ones that have passed, you know, deep inside that they don't want themselves to be the cause of your unhappiness for the rest of your life absolutely so profound so profound as well so you know deserving of joy and happiness we all deserve joy and happiness of course it's our birthright so don't hold back yes. from being happy nobody should you, you should be happy all the time every single second yeah. you should be happy and that's the most important thing the, the the last thing i wanted to touch on we didn't speak about your second book pieces of us can you share okay. maybe just quickly what Pieces of Us is all about? Because that's a very interesting okay. title as well, Pieces of Us. Yeah. Uh, yes. I my finger, my hand, my leg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, okay. Pieces of Us is like, um, the reason I chose that title uh, is because, um, you know, um, as a couple, uh, you know, again, society expects, because uh, my husband and I, we lost a child and we only had the, the one. Um, so everybody was actually, society was bombarding you with questions. Are you now going to get a divorce? Are you now going to separate? Because it's like, now you have nothing. You know, those are the words. And unfortunately, those are the words that I heard. And so I said that um, uh, it's, again, it's a choice. So the, the child is a gift in a marriage, not the glue that keeps your marriage together. So the gift that comes, uh, you know, afterwards, it's like um, you get married or whatever, if you have the baby, what, whenever you have a baby and you make a family together and it's not, it's not the alpha and the omega of your marriage. If you, if you, um, so my book was saying that, yes, my husband and I grieve differently. Yes, it's challenging. And I wanted to put out there that you can uh, still stay together and keep you, um, that relationship going, even though 
uh, we don't have a child anymore because our child, as we say, is that he came four years after we were married and um, he, he was just a gift. We didn't know that we were going to have that gift. We, when we got married, we didn't say, oh, you know what, uh, the condition of our marriage is if we have kids. So we just got married because it was the two of us. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yes, we, the, the most precious gift that we had um, for 16 years, but when, when it wasn't there anymore, um, we, we, uh, it didn't, we didn't even think about going separate ways. Although it can be so challenging because death is already challenging for one person. Marriage is already in any way challenging even if you don't lose a, 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 a loved one it's challenging because you go through phases and uh, we married 24 years and uh, it goes through diff different phases even if there's no loss so in this book pieces of us I said that we were in pieces after my son and we and the subtitle of the book is how marriage healed from loss of a child is how we decided together that we still we were on the same page and it's to show couples that you must want it and if you want it you can have it if you want your relationship to continue even though it's so uh, you know it's such like a big blow to your family life because here you have a family and now you you know it's kind of uh, you know something so major as uh, uh, obstacle has come between you uh, is the loss of a child and my book teaches um, uh, people in the similar situation is that you can make it work mm -hmm. like anything. Uh, so you just have to stick together and want it. And um, you can still have even a great relationship also incorporating this loss, but making a new life as a couple. Now we are a couple alone, but we're making a new normal of our marriage so that book also it's it's like very um, it, it's beneficial even to any couple even if the couple didn't lose a child mm -hmm. it's beneficial to say that we go through phases in our marriage because when you meet each other you're so young and uh, you know you want the white picket fence and you want <laughs> the scent you, you know and then when you don't get all of that you think oh no it's not what I want you know not how it's going to work but it's more uh, than that um, and you know, losing a child is a very big test uh, mm -hmm. to the marriage. So, uh, and, but you know what, I feel that if, if, if we can survive it, any couple can survive it and any couple can survive anything. Uh, you don't have to um, call it quits just because now this happened and, um, but it elaborates more uh, to read the book, but uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that's what that book is all about. No, thank you for sharing. Absolutely. I, I actually believe that uh, any obstacle in life will make a marriage much more stronger versus, and a lot of people choose the easy way out and they decide to end the marriage because they think the marriage was the problem, but the problem was not the marriage. It's within the person themselves. Exactly. Right? So you got to work on yes. yourself first. Uh, so I teach a lot on, on three domains in life. The first one is you. And I always say, once you work on your you domain, and you're able to fix that, then your relationship domain becomes easier and your work domain becomes so much more easy as well. So it must start with you thank as well. So Rosie, yes, yes. So thank you so much for inspiring us uh, today. We really are grateful for having you on our show, Inspirational Journeys Through Life with Straight Talk with Nolan. Any last words or tips for our listeners? And also please share with us, how can people get hold of your book or contact you as well? Okay. Um, yeah, my last message would be obviously, uh, you know, think positive, put it out there because, the, uh, you know, it's like, it's, it's uh, you know, when you put out there what you want in life, uh, it's like, it's an application. So if you, if you put out there negativity, it's an application for negativity. So I think that you need to put out an application for positivity, meaning that, you know, you, you speak to your creator and you're saying, you know what, um, this is what I want this and I don't want to be down and I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to be, I want to overcome these obstacles. And you can, I find out that once you say that and you mean it, belief, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's like they say faith, faith is like you, when you pray uh, to an entity and you just expect it 
to happen. And, and when you have a good enough, a great enough faith, that's exactly what happens. Mm. You, you, because you got no proof that somebody can hear when you pray, but you expect that it's going to, um, you know, come true, or you're going to get what you want in prayer uh, in terms of healing. So I just say, put out positivity to the universe and see what happens and take a chance. You've got nothing to lose, but when you're negative, you got time to lose. Yeah. So don't waste your time. Just be positive and um, live the best life that you can live because all of us have so much potential for life. That's why we're here. The one is not better than the other. We are all going to the same destination. We just have different journeys, and but the principles remain the same, uh, the positivity that you need. And uh, about my book, um, Okay, it was, I was just like doing, uh, people were asking me and I was doing, it actually wasn't on a book sh uh, shelf as yet, but I was just, you know, um, distributing the books myself. But um, on a WhatsApp number, they can, um, um, you know, get contact with me and I could give them the book. Okay. I, will, I will post the book to them. Okay, so okay. We'll, we'll share Roshni's details, her contact details on uh, the text of the podcast as well, and you can contact yes. us uh, for the book. And I'm sure pretty pretty soon it's going to be in the in the shelves as well because both books sound very fascinating and interesting. And I like what you said. Uh, when you start putting out negativity out into the universe, you're going to get negative stuff back to you. So rather focus on putting out the positivity and put positive messages out there, and watch how your world will unfold because you now are going to be on the same frequency with the universe and not on this negative frequency. And remember, there's more negatives in this world than positives. We have about 60,000 thoughts, negative thoughts as humans. So we've got a lot to go by, but this, this is why the more positivity you enforce in your life, the more better it's gonna be for you. So once again, thanks guys for listening. Uh, be sure to share the show with your friends, family, or anyone else that you feel it will help. As I always say, people resonate with authentic stories and be sure to follow our social media. Our handle is Straight Talk with Nolan and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Our stories are authentic and inspirational. So at this point, I'd like to wish you best wishes on your journey through life.